Welcome to the NovaWorks Learning Center. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the XDX Setup Wizard. Using the XDX Setup Wizard is the first step in adding XDX tagging to an HTML document. The wizard will set up the taxonomy and namespace for the document. Add Document and Entity Information, or DEI, to the document. Set up the units that will be used by your fax. And begin the tagging process by automatically tagging the document's cover page fax. You can also choose to split the file into smaller segments to allow for collaboration during the tagging process. Let's start by going to GoFiler. We have a simple AK document open in page view. We have already performed our HTML conversion and have adjusted the formatting and style of the document. To start the wizard, go to the XDX Report ribbon. Click the Taxonomy button in the XDX Document toolset. The wizard opens. The screen provides an overview of the XDX creation process. The first step will be to set the taxonomy. The second step will be to set our namespace information. The namespace itself will be created automatically using the values we set for the registrant's domain and the report period. Then we will add any required document and entity information. Finally, we will choose how we want to edit the document. This is where we decide to split the file into parts or keep the document in one piece. Click the Next button to start. The wizard analyzed our document when we started. It was able to detect the form type as 8K, so it already selected the most recent US GAP taxonomy for us. You can change the taxonomy selection by clicking on the taxonomy dropdown. Since we want to use US GAP 2019, we'll leave the selection as is. Click the Next button. Here is where we enter our namespace information. Add the registrant's CIK. In the case of dual listed companies or companies who are filing with co registrants, you want to use the CIK of the parent company or the company who has filed previously on behalf of the group. The wizard was also able to read the date of the report when it analyzed our document. If it had failed to locate the date, you would add it here. Enter the domain for the registrant. Again, for dual listed companies, this will be the company who has previously performed the filings. Then enter the ticker or identifier, if any. Click the Next button. Here we are going to specify the report period. As with the date of the report, the wizard will likely find this information in your document and add it for you. If it isn't filled out, set the starting and ending dates for the period. The preset dropdown has a bunch of presets to quickly fill out these fields for you. Now, if desired, you can click the Finish button and the wizard will stop here. It will add the taxonomy and namespace to the document and you can begin tagging. However, the wizard can do more work for us and give us a head start in the tagging of the document. So let's click the Next button and proceed to the next step. Going forward, we can exit the wizard at any time by clicking the Finish button. The next page of the wizard has options to specify the units for your fax. If you don't change the units, the wizard will add US dollars as the default unit for monetary fax, shares as the default unit for shares, and US dollars per share as the default unit for money per share. We have a simple AK as our document, so we don't need to add any other units. But for illustrative purposes, let's go ahead and show how to add a unit to the report. You can add simple units and compound units. The preset dropdown has a number of common units, so you can select the unit from the list if you see the one you need. Let's pick Percent Ratio Interest. Selecting a preset for the percent automatically sets the name of the unit to appear, the numerator for the unit to appear, and the default for option to ratio. That means that any time we tag data with an element that has the ratio data type, the software will set the unit to this one. Click Add to add it to the list. Let's make our own unit for US dollars per square foot. Ignore the preset dropdown for now. We know our unit isn't in that list. Instead, let's change the name to, say, USDP SQFT for US dollars per square foot. Set the numerator. That's the unit before the per. 
United States dollar. Now set the denominator. That's the unit after the per square foot. The list for the parameter default for doesn't include every data type, and we may not want to set the unit as the default unit for a specific data type anyway. Set this dropdown to Not Default. Click the Add button, and now you can see it in the list. You can add and edit units anytime you're tagging your document, so don't worry if you forget to add one now. We'll quickly use the Remove button to remove those units from our document, since we won't be using them on this AK. But that gives you an idea of how this part of the wizard works. Click the Next button to move to the next section. This is the last step where we can choose editing options for the document. There are three options. First, use a single file. This means that the document won't be split into segments, and the XDX data defining any custom elements or other meta information for the document will be stored in the header of the file. For simple filings like our 8K, this is probably the preferred option. The second option is to use a single HTML file, but a separate XDX file. This option won't split the document into segments, but it's going to take that XDX information for custom elements and place it in a separate companion document. If you pick this option, be careful when you move the document to a new location. You'll have to move the XDX file too. Despite that, there are benefits to this option. XDX data can be shared between documents, which means I can automatically add extension elements that I created in one document to a different document. For larger reports like 10Qs and 10Ks, this can be useful. You can pick up the XDX file from a previous quarter or year and have all the custom element information ready to go for your new filing. We'll cover how to do that later. The final option is to use multiple HTML files. This option splits the document into segments. Each financial statement and each note to the financials will be placed in a separate file. Those files will then share XDX information which will be placed in its own file as well. This option is best suited for larger jobs, where multiple users can work on individual segments simultaneously. For our little 8K, we'll use the single file option. It makes the most sense. Now the last optional feature of the wizard is to automatically tag the cover page using XDX inline facts. This is going to use that analysis it performed at the beginning of the wizard to add XBRL elements to the cover page. Let's check the option and click Finish. The wizard added XDX information to the cover page, which you can see by the cross icons, and is indicated by the log that appeared in the information view. Here's the form type. If I click on it, you can see the element and context in the page view control window. The data is tagged with the DEI document type element and the context showing the period of the report. The wizard tagged the registrant name, stated jurisdiction, file number, etc. What the wizard can tag for you depends on your HTML document. Cover pages that have complex structures, for example a lot of divisions or paragraph tags, can make it harder for the wizard to determine which block contains the data. But for the most part, it's going to tag between 75 and 100% of the cover page, which saves us a lot of time. For details on how to tag a cover page manually, you can watch the cover page tagging tutorial. Once you've run the XDX setup wizard on a document, you can't run it again. You'll see if we click on the taxonomy button again, it's going to open the document properties, which looks very similar to the wizard. There's a tab to edit the taxonomy for the document. The namespace for the document the reporting period, the units, which we mentioned earlier, the document and entity facts for the report. These are the cover page and DEI facts that have no visual data in the document, like the fact for the amendment flag element. And finally, the linkages for the documents. Here's where we can specify an external XDX file to use for custom elements. If you specify a file that doesn't exist, that's okay. The software will make the file for you. The Overrides field specifies a file to use for presentation overrides, which is an advanced topic we won't cover now. 
You can use the Properties dialog to edit the document properties at any time. Just click the OK button to save your changes. And that concludes this tutorial on how to use the XDX Setup Wizard. Thank you for watching.